You know, I'd almost forgotten that this place existed. Let's fire her up. And hello there. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Hey there, Internet! It's been an interesting couple of years since last we met, but here we are again for another season. Movies, games, another dip into the wonderful world of the demo scene, and maybe an extra surprise or two. And what better way to kick off the season than in traditional style? Yes, today we're taking a look at the recent reboot of everyone's favourite stone-handed demon, Hellboy! Released in 2019, this reboot, simply titled Hellboy, shows the titular Crimson Crusader in a clash with the Blood Queen of Britain itself, and it's going to take everything he's got to stop the apocalypse one more time. Sadly, this reboot only received a Rotten Tomatoes score of 18%. Rotten Tomatoes isn't the be-all and end-all of film quality, and they're certainly not the boss of me. So we'll make up our own minds on this adult adventure for a decidedly different, yet strikingly similar, Hellboy. We begin in Tijuana, as our hero seeks to find an errant BPRD agent. But oh dear, our agent has been turned. Mexican vampires. The stories I could tell. And in his death throes, he predicts a grim fate. We meet our Professor Broom for this movie. And I would pull out a stack of Lovejoy jokes, but that would demonstrate exactly how old I am. And I like to keep people guessing. Our hero has business in England, wherein ancient giants have risen. Oh yes, still plenty of giants roaming about the English countryside. They don't come that near the Midlands though these days. Oh no. It's about the 1930s when we put the fear of iron in them. Oh no, 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 no. They're not fey or anything. It's just we used big guns with heavy iron shells. They soon learned. But before that, we're treated to the latest version of Hellboy's origin. Uh, pretty much same as before. Rasputin promises the Nazis victory. The Allies invade the remote Scottish island where the ritual is being performed. Anungunram is summoned, but uh-oh, he's only a baby. And Trevor Broom Brutenholm takes in the infant devil as his own son. The only real difference to this one is the addition of Lobster Johnson. But in the bowels of an ancient abbey, an angry Grugach uncovers the head of the Blood Queen. And so to that giant hunt. But shock! The real quarry is HB himself! And why? Well, something about a vaguely worded prophecy about a devil on the throne of England. That's the problem with vaguely worded prophecies. A devil on the throne could be a more figurative interpretation. Doesn't have to be in a more literal translation like Big Red himself on the throne of England. Except that there were giants and it falls to our hero to clean up after the aristocracy. And without getting too political, I've had to do that on more than one occasion. And while he gets a little banged up in the process, it's in the healing, 
and the cut to Inner City London, that we meet Alice Monaghan and Ben Daimio. Alice Monaghan, stolen by the Fae as a mere babe in arms, returned at the intervention of Hellboy. More on that later. And Major Ben Daimio of M11. We'll get to his story a little later on as well. But there's unfinished business at the Osiris Mansion. And the ghost of Lady Hatton has one final prophecy. The Blood Queen is made whole once more. And we discover the London branch of the BPRD. But Hellboy's not sold on the premise of killing demons. Arguing about it makes me head hurt. It also makes Hellboy's head hurt, which is why he goes off to clear his head. Which leads him to the Baba Yaga's table, where he learns the location of the Blood Queen. And on the way, we discover the backstory of Ben Daimyo. He was training with his unit in Belize. They were asked by a tribal elder to find a man-eating creature. But it stalked them, slashed up Major Daimyo a good'un, and killed the rest of his unit, leaving him the only survivor. But Hellboy and his team are too late, and Nimue is restored. And worse, Alice gets a nasty wound. The only way to save her is Merlin himself, who has a little insight into the true parentage of Hellboy. So then, the story goes that King Arthur had a secret daughter. And this lineage leads to a witch in the 1500s who marries a goat-headed demon, gets dragged down to hell, and gives birth to a son, Anungun Rama. Yeah, so our HB is now half-human, and the descendant of King Arthur. Ain't that just a wrinkle in the story? But taking hold of Excalibur, our hero has a vision of what he might become, and he doesn't like it one bit. So precisely how he plans to defeat Nimue, the Blood Queen? Well, how about distracting an angry Grugach for starters? Now then, you're probably wondering why Piggy here has such a hate on for our hero. Well, you see, this particular Grugach was the same Grugach that was the replacement Baby Alice when Baby Alice was stolen by the Fae, and he blamed Hellboy for never having the chance at a real human life. You see? Mythical creatures. Nothing but trouble. But in the end, she was only toying with him, for she too would see Anung Unrama wield his birthright. By any means necessary. But the Professor will be damned if he lets death stop him from saving the world. And Hellboy embraces not his destiny, but his humanity. And the Blood Queen quite literally loses her head. And after a heartfelt farewell from the Professor, we cut to six months later, where we discover a rather familiar Ichthyosapien. So that was Hellboy. And no, it's not a brilliant film. But I'm still going to put it into my house of love. This isn't Del Toro's Hellboy. It's brimming with gore and destruction, and it's as foul-mouthed as Marshall's other work. But does that detract? Not greatly. So let's get right to it. Harbour's Hellboy. And truth be told, for a supposedly now half-human demon, he's unsurprisingly likeable. That is, you expect to identify with the hero, much as Hellboy fills that role. And Harbour brings out the character's frustration with his mission to destroy the creatures of the night that would do the same to us several times over, but he also brings a vulnerability that I never felt with Perlman's performance, and Ian McShane is a much more former action hero first, book-nosed professor a distant second, for what we see of him. One plus point that I'll give this movie, if nobody else will, is that director Neil Marshall, being a fellow Brit, has spared no expense on getting both Daniel Day Kim's Ben Daimyo and Mila Hovavich's Nimue, the Blood Queen, proper voice coaching. And while their dialogue is a little stilted in places because of it, my ears at least aren't distracted by misplaced long O's. Yeah, it's a pet peeve of mine when British accents are van dyked. Thankfully, I'm happy to report that on this movie, they had better voice coaches. Of the performances, 
Sasha Lane's Alice Monaghan is a smart, sassy, modern British woman who grounds the film in a sort of reality, even as we dive into quasi-Arthurian madness. Daniel Day Kim's Major Daimyo is rather one-note, all gruffness and standoffishness, but considering the character's backstory, this can at least be understood. Stephen Graham's vocal talents for the secondary villain the Grugach extend mostly to Mardi Scouser, when the Grugach comes oddly from Scottish folklore. Which brings us to the story, and the reveal that Hellboy is actually half-human, and a descendant of King Arthur himself, which is more than a little hard to swallow, and does seem to be pandering to British vanities, though it makes for a spectacular set-piece. Suspension of disbelief notwithstanding though, the main thrust moves along at a decent pace, and for a reboot, the matter of originitis is handled deftly and feels organic, even if the opening is a little too music video for my tastes. So, did it deserve 18%? I don't think so. It's maybe not as funny, clever or mature as it thinks that it is, or even wants to be, much like Hellboy himself. This is Hellboy, grand adventure on a large scale. And to me it just feels like an indie movie with shoehorn CGI bits. But its saving grace is that these characters are actually likeable, endearing even. If you're old enough, and don't mind a bit of the red stuff, and more than a few naughty words, then this reboot might just be for you. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be hellaciously awesome, check out my Patreon linked below. But for this episode, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!